Chapter 501, The Descent of the Seven Rings Translator, Endless Fantasy Translation Editor, Endless Fantasy Translation It had been more than six months. On this day, the spiral funnel in the sky grew larger, to the extent where it broke through the clouds under the turbulent layer, while gradually approaching the land. The stigmata sorcerers, who had already casted the legion of soul slaves away, were witnessing the law chains of the infernal spirit world as they intertwined with the law chains of the abyss world. Seven Rings Celestial Sorcerer was slaughtering within the vortex, the vortex which was nearly breaking through the last membrane of the world veil. Seven Rings Celestial Sorcerer appeared in the lower part of the funnel vortex in the form of a normal man, with his body slightly bent. As if it were a thin membrane, the world veil separated him from the infernal spirit world. An intimidating force was being unleashed in all directions, with most living creatures of the infernal spirit world having already escaped without a trace as the fight between the sorcerer and the infernal giant went on. Yet at this moment, the living creatures even further away from the battlefield began to tremble, desiring escape yet not being able to move a muscle. Suddenly, as if a balloon had exploded, a dull noise could be heard. The world veil which became the vertex of the spiral funnel by rule, was broken through by seven rings celestial sorcerer. The actual body of the sorcerer had finally succeeded in descending upon the inner part of the infernal spirit world. Ha, finally, a successful descent. A low, weary voice could be heard. The law chains of the infernal spirit world and the law chains of the abyss world were flicked a couple thousand meters away by a vast energy wave right at the very moment seven rings celestial sorcerer's actual form descended. Crunch. Crunch. Like the shrill sound of metal friction, multiple law chains were being propped to the limit by energy waves emitted from seven rings celestial sorcerer. Snap. The sorcerer, whose body was slightly bent, straightened his body while holding his twisted metal staff of blood and flesh as the seven rings wall ripples broke out in all directions. In a split second, layers of law chains were broken down into nothingness, seven rings celestial sorcerer forcibly descended into this small world that made him feel somewhat breathless. Puff, 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 puff. At that moment, with Seven Rings Celestial Sorcerer as the center of a million meters radius, one after another, level one weak creatures with independent thoughts suddenly self-exploded, turning into clouds of blood mist. This was caused by the scouring, crushing, and shaking of Seven Rings Celestial Sorcerer's will. Somewhere even further away, no matter if it were the unwatching demon hunters or the soul slaves, all grew silent. In the eyes of these lower-level beings, it was as if the sky of the whole world was ripped apart, while the appearance of a dark area of horror followed. All the lower-level beings could muster, were the instinctive trembling of their bodies. Greetings to the great Seven Rings Celestial Sorcerer. Blood mists blossomed throughout all the land, inadvertently adding countless kills to Seven Rings Celestial Sorcerer. However, to the Sorcerer himself, the desire to protect these creatures from being killed was as difficult as a normal human attempting to step on the ground without stepping on the ants in the grass. Not paying heed to these stigmata sorcerers, his eyes set forth to the seas outside of the infernal spirit world. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Abaddon stood above the whirlpool of the deep sea. Behind him was approximately ten trembling, terrified giant kings, as they felt the presence of the horrifying giant who had completely descended upon the inner part of the infernal spirit world. Ha 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 ha, despite the distance between us, we can still feel this strong presence. Indeed, this is the wrath of the eternal dominator. Every inch of flame on his body was burning with excitement, carrying the purgatory furnace with eagerness, he glanced toward the land of the infernal spirit world. After Abaddon had led the final purgatory giant into the whirlpool of the sea, he snuck into the world aperture and returned to the world of purgatory furnaces. In between the world aperture, golden flames surged and gradually filled up the aperture. Bloop! 
The whirlpool of the infernal spirit world resumed to its serene state. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. HMPH. After expressing ever so coldly, the eyes looked toward another direction. This time, after a hint of coldness flashed by the eyes of Seven Rings Celestial Sorcerer, his figure transcended into a dim light and later vanished. Clearly feeling the wrath of Seven Rings Celestial Sorcerer, none of the Stigmata Sorcerers dared utter much, breathing lightly under the heavy pressure. Puff, 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 puff. Blood mists exploded all the way ahead, all of them being traces of Seven Rings Celestial Sorcerer stepping on the small creatures. In just a few days, Seven Rings Celestial Sorcerer had straddled across half of the Infernal Spirit World, reaching a small island after passing through the Infernal Spirit World and the vast seas. Leaving the waves shocked and turbulent all along the way. A sharp look flickered past his half-pale face which was not covered by his metal mask. His right hand casually swung the twisted metal staff of blood and flesh. Bang! In a split second, the mysterious black hill on the island was wiped out by an invisible giant hand, and an enormous secret place was exposed. Buzz! Spatial energy waves flashed by as the first Acrepoid king attempted to escape, but Seven Rings Celestial Sorcerer rapidly cut open a black crack, exposing the shocked first Acrepoid king. His pale hand ignored the surrounding black flames and the exotic spring beneath him, grasping the neck of the first Acrepoid king as if drawing him toward him. No! Puff! The pale hand shattered the neck of the first Acrepoid king in a split second, after the fallen body was devoured by the twisted metal staff of blood and flesh, the other hand shoved the head of the first Acrepoid king into a transparent test vessel filled with green liquid. O oh great master of eternal springs, I am willing to offer. Seven rings celestial sorcerer threw the vessel into his private quarters as he sets his eyes onto another direction while letting out another snort coldly. It doesn't matter what avatar from whichever world you are from, if you don't get out now, then you might as well never do. A sigh escaped. Layers of waves rolled up from the deep sea and disappeared into a twisted spiral in the sky. Puff! Seven Rings Celestial Sorcerer turned into a dim light and vanished once again. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. A few days later. Seven Rings Celestial Sorcerer who had once again traversed across half the world pressed toward the Sea of Whirlpools, violent winds scrambled while swirling the clouds, the whirlpools of the sea were being wiped out one by one leaving the last whirlpool intact while an angered cry of an enormous crab was emitted from it. Do you have a death wish? The staff of blood and flesh in his hand underwent a transfiguration, becoming an indescribably twisted monster, wanting to enter the whirlpool. Puff! The whirlpool immediately vanished as Mount Serpentine broke off all connections shared with this world. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Returning back to the few stigmata sorcerers, Seven Rings Celestial Sorcerer coldly glared at the fearful bunch of them. This demon hunting expedition is now over, hand in the strategy plan details and the abyss experimental data of the expedition. A hand took the coordinates given by Bone Bell Tower as left behind by the purgatory giant world while Seven Rings Celestial Sorcerer said coldly. The fall of the Black Isota Tower's Stigmata Sorcerer. It might not be much to the sorcerer's world, but to the Holy Tower of Seven Rings, it was not a subtle loss. The wrath of the Celestial was indeed not one to be bet with easily. Yes, sir. The stigmata sorcerers lowered their heads. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. A few months later. Wiki, Solemn, Millie and Claudia flew out from the Acrepoid Kingdom. Along with the other abyssal summoner demon hunters, they were stunned by what they were seeing. In less than a year's time in the Acrepoid Kingdom, the infernal spirit world had. The lot was terrified for a while, but then a wave of relief took over as soon as the fear passed. If it so happened that everyone was here, then two of the stigmata sorcerers would have fallen, the level of danger would be unimaginable. 
Regarding the purgatory furnace in the hands of the purgatory giant King Abaddon, even the actual descent of seven rings celestial sorcerer could now only be fathomed through the historical remains left behind. Well, what of Grimm? In the midst of doubt, after another forty years had passed, Wiki, Solemn, Millie and Claudia, returned to the sorcerer's world following the sorcerer legion who had just ended a demon hunting expedition mission. Chapter 502 Nightmare World Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation A dark red ominous breath was lingering throughout the sky in every corner that could be seen. With the ground as his support, Grimm climbed up as he looked around nervously. Yet the only thing he could see was a twisted scenery approximately a hundred meters away. Beyond the scenery lied the lingering remains of an ominous dark red mist of nightmares. The flat ground seemed to be a small path. Not far from it were dense woods as silence filled the air, showing no signs of creatures or life. The ground was slightly moist, muddy and crawling with disgusting black bugs the size of finger knuckles, with weeping patterns printed on their backs. The bugs throughout the muddy ground were constantly crawling and wriggling. Grim transfigured from an acrepoid man into the form of a sorcerer. After taking the initial steps of determining that he had indeed fallen into the nightmare world, Grim cleaned the sorcerer book that was filled with dirt and disgusting bugs. He tucked the book under his arms, then cautiously bent over and observed his surroundings tentatively. The world of nightmares. Grim gazed afar as he opened his palm. At the moment, Grim's palms were slightly twisted as it emitted the dark red mist of the nightmare world. It was as if the palm had already become a part of the nightmare world. Yet the sorcerer book was obviously not affected in the slightest, the goat skull of the staff was unaffected as well. Little Minor Little Minor Grim cried out, yet no response from Little Minor could be heard. Filled with doubts, Grim sliced open the dimensional gap. He saw Little Miner who was sound asleep, but no matter how Grim called out for him, there were no signs of Little Miner waking up. His eyes under the mask of truth flickered as Grim put Little Miner back into the dimensional gap. The nightmare world, is it asleep, or am I? Grim who had fallen into the nightmare world still chose to analyze and deduce the situation using the wisdom of a sorcerer. All of it had happened too suddenly, at first he was waiting in the Acrepoid kingdom of the infernal spirit world, waiting for Black Isotus Stigmata Sorcerer to rescue him. A few months had passed while not knowing what had happened to Black Isotus Stigmata Sorcerer, the nightmare shadow of the Sabbatic Goat Staff had lost the seal for its mana pool. While he himself had fallen into the nightmare world. Don't tell me. Black Isotus Stigmata Sorcerer had fallen? Being shocked by his own speculation, Grimm immediately dismissed the thought. A stigmata sorcerer of such great strength could not possibly have fallen that easily, unless if it were by the hand of the Eternal Dominator. Compared to this speculation, Grimm was more willing to believe that the Black Isota Sorcerer Academy was under attack, or that for some reason, Black Isota Stigmata Sorcerer had to go against the contract in turn using this sorcerer book as a means of some kind of compensation. What had happened to Black Isota Stigmata Sorcerer while he was descending upon the Acrepoid Kingdom? As he continued to speculate, Grimm followed the small path as he walked one step at a time on the muddy ground and the disgustingly twisted invertebrate bugs, reaching a black stone mountain. The black stone mountain was rugged with odd rocks, Tall yet twisted trees were rooted and growing while black chains were hanging from the top of the stone mountain. This place is. Grim looked at this huge black mountain and was startled, this was the back of the mountain of the way to the Black Isota Sorcerer Academy from the Jewel Sea. It was also the back of the mountain Grim had seen on the night he first entered the Black Isota Sorcerer Academy. Crunch, crunch. After the First Civilization War, the sorcerer civilization had defeated the nightmare civilization. And what followed was the nightmare world parasitizing on the sorcerer's world, attempting to transform into the sorcerer nightmare civilization, so this was what was going on. 
Although the scenery there was emitting an ominous, mysterious, and terrifying aura of the nightmare world, this was an actual illusion of the sorcerer's world, the only thing missing was life from the actual sorcerer's world. Hmm. Wait, this isn't right, the guardian trees at the academy also had living will in the sorcerer's world. Grim suddenly thought of something as he ran to the black stone mountain, toward the enormous twisted black tree and shouted, open the gates of the academy. Whoosh. The twisted tree did not answer Grim as if it did not have any will at all, like a normal giant tree in the nightmare world. However, as Grim approached the black stone mountain, the black chains hanging on the mountain started to be shaken by these odd trees. Stopping in his tracks, Grim did not dare to approach rashly. At this moment, large grey flames suddenly gathered in the air, a giant stone face of more than ten meters tall appeared, looking in all directions, following the sound of the odd trees, quickly determining the position of Grim who had ceased to exist from his point of view. Filthy being, if you do not wish to be purified, leave immediately. This enormous stone face, which looked as if it could not leave the premises of the Black Isota Sorcerer Academy, began yelling at Grim loudly. Grim's body was twisting as he was eroded by the odd power of the stone face. The nightmare aura continued to dissipate in all directions. Dean Rocksword Grim could recognize its voice and the voice indeed belonged to the Dean of the Academy who was a floor above Master Piranos and always carried a grey stone sword on his back. Dean Rocksword, I'm. It was as if it could not actually feel the presence of Grim. Only the odd trees that had always been asleep that occasionally woke up noticed Grim. Whoosh. Suddenly dozens of owls flew out, and their green eyes looked like the eyes of a devil, emitting an eerie dark red presence while searching for its prey. Soon after, being guided by the odd trees, the owls immediately found Grim and swarmed down toward him. Guardians of the Academy In the midst of his shock, a sudden thought came to Grim. Grimm attempted to stimulate the principal will of the sorcerer's world. Right at this moment, the nightmare breath on Grimm started to lighten, and his twisted figure began to regain stability. Hoot hoot! However, these guardian owls of the academy still swarmed down with green light still in their eyes, as if not sensing the principal will of the sorcerer's world being released from Grimm. Not having any choice, Grimm took out and waved his sabbatic goat staff to resist. Puff! After the owls passed through the sabbatic goat staff, they went through Grimm's body which had already solidified. Both parties did not engage in contact in the same world. It was as if, as Grimm's body slowly began to solidify, it represented that he was no longer a nightmare phantom. Instead, he had become a foreign creature which had fallen into the nightmare world. Hoot, hoot. After the owls hovered in circles above Grimm's head for a short while, the odd trees guided the grey stone face and the owls despite being able to see Grimm. The guidance in the eyes of the grey stone face seemed to be born out of nothing. The owls of the Black Isota Tower were doubtful as they flew back into the academy. The stone giant in the sky looked around for a brief moment before dispersing into grey flames and soon dissipated into nothingness. Under the mask of truth, Grim held his breath with his eyes darting around. Grim had stimulated the principal will of the sorcerer's world at this point. Although most of the nightmare breath on his body had been solidified, there were still a few small parts where a subtle amount of nightmare breath was released. This meant that Grim was not completely out of the class of a nightmare phantom. Even the Black Isota Sorcerer Academy has this level of protection. If I were to head to the Holy Tower area, I might be noticed and hunted down by the strong guardians of the Holy Tower. No, I can't take that risk. After taking a deep breath, Grim tried to fly across the Black Stone Mountain to take a look at the inner part of the Black Isota Sorcerer Academy. Grim instinctively had an ominous feeling that an unknown danger would befall him the moment he took flight. Despite that, he wanted to give it a go as he was now near the Academy. As he was pondering on this, Grim tried to adjust his nature force. His body began to float. That ominous feeling grew heavier and heavier. 
Finally, as Grimm's flying height reached a certain point of threshold, a crack suddenly opened twenty meters above Grimm's head as a scarlet red tongue appeared from it. Gasp! Shocked, Grimm hurriedly descended back on the ground as the tongue from the sky followed Grimm. POW! The tongue crashed into the ground, leaving a crater that was narrowly avoided by Grimm. Grimm escaped quickly without a word. The huge crack seemed to have lost its sense of where Grimm was on the ground. Little sorcerer, you can't run far. I know you're already in this world. I will find you. I will find you. I will find you, you will become my new vessel, and I will be reborn again. This voice was the horrific creature Grimm had pulled into the nightmare world. Grimm ran like his life depended on it, not daring to stay there any longer. Chapter 503 Just a Bad Dream Translator, Endless Fantasy Translation Editor, Endless Fantasy Translation Huff, huff, huff. After running for some time in this mystical, ominous and horrifying atmosphere, Grimm stopped in front of a port located at the back of the Mountain of Black Isota Sorcerer Academy as he breathed heavily. That bastard, how dare he! Wanting to use me as a vessel to gain his so-called rebirth. Grimm angrily muttered under his breath. The nightmare world was just an illusory world, it was not an existing world composed of actual matters. However, in this illusory world, a group of horrifying nightmare creatures came to be. These creatures used nightmares to parasitize, influence or even control countless creatures in the real world, forming a symbiotic relationship between them, in turn affecting reality through illusions. They were unable to be killed, unless someone was able to destroy the entire nightmare world. These horrifying creatures of the nightmare world possessed an even longer history compared to the sorcerers. It was after the birth of the ancient mechanical sorcerer way before the battle with the ancient sea tribe in the sorcerer's world. Back then the nightmare creatures had already experienced a long biological evolution. Parasitizing from one creature of a world to much stronger creatures, there was no creature class that could resist the parasitizing of this horrifying world. Gradually, the stronger the creatures being parasitized became, the more the nightmare creatures parasitized a world that would be able to control curses, since nature and forcibly evolve by devouring a stronger body. Through all this, it had become a truly powerful nightmare civilization. Finally, after this strong civilization had conquered one world after another, it had discovered the ancient sorcerer's world that had begun to take control of its surrounding worlds. An ancient war of an immense scale naturally erupted between the two worlds. Ancient mechanical sorcerers, ancient black sorcerers and the ancient sea tribe joined hands, and successfully found the weakness of forced evolution through their wits, in turn defeating the nightmare civilization. This seemed like the historical turning point of the sorcerer's world. In the history of the sorcerer's world, the ancient mechanical sorcerers developed into elemental sorcerers through the distinct characteristics of the bizarre creatures. Through this development, they paved a way to a new mode of biological evolution, in turn gradually developing the sorcerer's world into an enormous and powerful civilization, establishing the glorified legend of the ancient sorcerers. However, the actual hidden history of the sorcerer's world was that the sorcerer civilization had only defeated the outer shell of the nightmare world. From that point onwards, the sorcerer's world had been parasitized by the nightmare world. Becoming a new target and host, the two worlds became inseparable. Just as the horrifying creatures had thought that a new era, the sorcerer nightmare civilization was coming to be, it was in fact the start of a dark history. Normal humans were too weak, thus they were unable to allow these horrifying creatures to pass through the aperture of the world. Yet the growing mental strength and knowledge of the sorcerers was the nemesis of these horrifying creatures of the nightmare world. From then onwards, the nightmare world of the endless world seemed to have vanished, only leaving myths of the nightmare world. Seemingly the ancient sorcerers had not only defeated the bizarre world, it would have seemed as if they had indirectly sealed the creatures of the endless world as well as the illusory world. 
Defeating the sorcerer's world would break the seal of the nightmare world. It would equal revenge on the sorcerer's world. In other words, during the second civilization war in the sorcerer's world, the sorcerer's world was so close to being annihilated that the abyss world would have been turned into the abyss nightmare world. The whole of history was rewritten by the supreme celestial sorcerer who held the lever of destiny in his hands. The present nightmare world was in the same state as the sorcerer's world, already on its way to demise. Every horrifying creature in this illusory world began to weaken, facing true death. Judgment Staff Stigmata Sorcerer With the vastness of the nightmare world, where on earth can I find Judgment Staff Stigmata Sorcerer? Grim mumbled to himself. Before Grim had fallen into the nightmare world, Grim knew that his only hope of leaving the nightmare world was finding Judgment Staff Stigmata Sorcerer. It was mentioned in the sorcerer book given to him by Black Isota Stigmata Sorcerer when he pulled Grim into the Tower of Destruction's mental void. The nightmare world was an invincible world to the Stigmata Sorcerer, yet to the lower level sorcerers, this was a terrifying illusory world that was equivalent to a seal of space time. Grim took out the sorcerer book. The moment he flipped open the sorcerer book, Grim realized that the letters above had started to disintegrate, becoming fumes of black smoke. It was like the mental void of the breaking tower of destruction Grim had seen in the past. Those strands of words were all the experiences of Black Isota Stigmata Sorcerer. The letters revealed the desire to restore the past glory of the ancient sorcerers and to save the sorcerer's world from its fate of demise. Yet right at this moment, the letters continued to dissipate. Not being able to read the content in time, Grimm could only sense the wall within as he hastily looked at the cover page of the sorcerer book. Book of Black Isotta Only the word, black in the ancient sorcerer text was left as it continued to dissipate. Black Isotta said that this would be my Book of Grimm. But this sorcerer book's name is Book of Black Isotta, this would mean that after being promoted to Stigmata Sorcerer, only then one can name the sorcerer book after one's own name. The content within, is his will during his Stigmata Sorcerer days, and not the will of his entire sorcerer days. The perception of will was different according to the phase of life one was in. If this sorcerer book were to become the Book of Grimm, then this would mean that this was the Book of Grimm as an official sorcerer and not the Stigmata Sorcerer book that would be named after Grimm after being promoted to a Stigmata Sorcerer. The difference in between the two was indeed not a small one. After a moment of wild thoughts, Grimm looked at the sorcerer book as the will of Black Isota had completely dissipated. After every page had returned to its clean state, a sigh was held back. Black Isota Stigmata Sorcerer what has happened to him? All these sudden changes were a catastrophe to Grimm. Puff! A fireball appeared on top of Grimm's magic staff. The fire burned brightly, revealing the laws of light and heat. After some magical fluctuations, the fireball turned into fire birds, fire bats, and fire bees. Grimm silently felt his magic power and the laws of the world. How clear and real everything was that it was as if this was the reality of the endless world. Yet it was indeed just a nightmare world of illusions. I can't give up. Grimm clenched his teeth tightly, his eyes under the mask of truth revealed his determination toward his eternal pursuit of a higher path of sorcery. Ever since he had chosen to become a sorcerer, all the emotional intertwinement, Fate variables and all his experiences were just the scenery along the way on his path of being a sorcerer. It was indeed due to the fact that in this journey of life, too many beautiful things were only present for a short amount of time. It was because of that, because they had to face the unknown yet cruel fate, that human ancestors chose to evolve by becoming sorcerers. Sorcerers, they were the ideals of human ancestors, the ideal toward God. Only when all the laws could pass through the endless world, change everything, and when the laws of goodness were left, that would then be the definition of the omnipotent God that had been described in all the mythical novels and holy songs or texts in the endless world. Even if I could never find Judgment Staff Stigmata Sorcerer, even if I could be trapped in this illusory world forever, 
even if I were to be hunted down for life by those terrifying creatures. I will continue on this path. If becoming a stigmata sorcerer means being able to cross through the nightmare world, then I will become a stigmata sorcerer right here and now. Grim blabbered passionate words that made no sense as he motivated himself to not give up. Compared to the foreign worlds, where the strong stepped on bones under their feet as the way to evolve, to evolve under the stigmata sorcerers of the sorcerer towers, all they had been doing was accumulating and researching knowledge, bearing infinite boredom and loneliness as low-level sorcerers. The more boredom and loneliness one bore, the higher chance for the sorcerer to live amongst higher levels of the sorcerer towers, directly reaching the final level beyond the stigmata sorcerer. Crunch! Grim abruptly opened the wooden door of a room near the port, the crunch sound released by the friction of the wooden door could be heard clearly in the silence. There were no signs of humans in the room. Every object in the room emitted an ominous and corrupted breath, releasing fumes of dark red smoke. Grim changed his way of thinking. Imagining ways to make up for this scenario in the sorcerer world, this could very well be just a normal night family. Being able to live on the port behind the Black Isota Tower, these people were people with significant relation to the Black Isota Sorcerer Academy. Grimm's gaze was set upon the bed in the room. His breath under the mask of truth hastened and an incredibly surprised look took form in his eyes. A spiral aperture of the twisted world was on the wooden bed of the room. Is this really, a world aperture? In the sorcerer's world, every bed was an entrance to the nightmare world. This was something every sorcerer knew. Grim just wanted to give it a try, to see whether it worked the other way around. A wave of infinite joy washed over Grim as he flung himself into the world aperture without a second thought. Although the aperture was a small one, Grim could care less as he unleashed his wild instinct while squeezing himself in wildly. It really is the sorcerer's world. It really is the sorcerer's world. Grim could feel the moistness in his eyes. Through the small aperture, he could see a familiar sight. It was the sorcerer's world. The sorcerer's world that was cruel yet peaceful at the same time under the laws of the holy tower. However, the aperture was too small, Grim could not even squeeze in. Puff! Grim was pushed out of the world aperture as it slowly closed in. Right at that moment, Grim could hear the sound of a little girl weeping. A consoling voice of a mature woman came from behind the closing aperture. Come on now, don't be scared. It's just a bad dream, don't cry dear. As the world aperture closed, Grim trembled where he stood as silence filled the room in the nightmare world. Did he turn into a horrifying creature of the nightmare world? If he were to find a bigger world aperture to go to the sorcerer's world, then he would have to find it from a sorcerer's place, but the mental strength of a sorcerer. In the midst of this breathless despair, Grim tightened his grip on the bony knuckle of his sabbatic goat staff as he silently closed his eyes. Chapter 504 Lamp of Awakening Translator, Endless Fantasy Translation Editor, Endless Fantasy Translation the nightmare world had parasitized the sorcerer's world. Therefore, it also had the law of day and night. Night was a blur of distant surroundings, shrouded in nightmare mists, a stressful situation of not being able to see a thing. Every bed a person could sleep on was the entrance to the sorcerer's world. In other words, this was the place where the mental state of men from the sorcerer's world could be lost and enter into the nightmare world. As day arrived, all world aperture gateways between the sorcerer's world and the nightmare world had seemingly closed. The blurry shrouds of mist in the distance had also dispersed. However, the world seemed as if it had become a half-illusioned body, a body similar to Grimm's when he had become a half-illusioned body at night. A black sun was hanging high up in the sky. The ground, trees, rocks and even buildings started to become blurry and twisted all of them releasing an ominous nightmare breath. Only Grimm's body which was solidified had become distinct from the nightmare world. The numerous disgusting bugs on the ground had vanished as well. 
it was as if it was merely a hallucination of the night. Of course, I still have no idea how that horrifying creature that had targeted me had sensed me, but for safety measures, changing locations was indeed the right move. As he was thinking about this, Grimm carefully observed the streets of the port around him, then attempted to fly. There were no feelings of discomfort or pressure. Could it be that the day in both the sorcerer's world and the nightmare world was the period when these horrifying creatures rest? To come to think of it, it would make sense. Having the trait of not being able to be killed, it would make sense that these horrifying creatures would also have some defects in their nature. The horrifying creatures of this world can't all be as strong as that creature that had his eyes on me. Maybe I should start with some weaker creatures to get an understanding of them first. As Grimm was lost in his thoughts, he was suddenly reminded of Little Minor. Little Minor? Grimm tried to call for Little Minor. He could sense the living breath of Little Minor in his subconscious mind yet he had no way of communicating with him. The situation was like when there was someone near you while you were in a dream, but you had no way of waking up. A sigh escaped his lips. Grimm had given up on contacting Little Minor. It was no wonder this was called the illusory world of ceiling space and time itself. It had completely prohibited the communication ability of space-time between Grimm and Little Minor. Grimm retrieved his staff or reconnaissance craft from the dimensional gap. Creak. After the metal hatch was opened, Grimm gingerly went in. He had decided to go seek for the horrifying creatures, or also known as nightmare phantoms in this world, to obtain information about them while it was relatively safer to do so during the day by going to other cities of ordinary humans. The metal hatch closed once again. Whiz, the staff or reconnaissance craft blasted away into the distance. After flying for about four hourglasses worth of time, Grim passed by a small patch of vicious thorn forests and reached an ordinary town. According to the twisted state and nightmare breath shown by the town buildings, Grim could determine that this town would be an ordinary town with the population of a few thousand people in the sorcerer's world. Creak. The door of the metal hatch opened as the Starfall reconnaissance craft landed steadily three meters above the ground. Let's hope that I can get something out of this town tonight. As he collected his thoughts, Grimm stepped down from the Starfall reconnaissance craft. He stored the aircraft back into the dimensional gap as he calculated the time. There was approximately two hourglasses left before entering the night. There's still so much time left, perhaps I should study something. He pondered upon this as he sliced open the dimensional gap. A white light was taken out from the gap by Grimm. It was the awakening ray collected by Grimm on Mount Serpentine while he was in the maze of the sea serpent. With the awakening ray in Grimm's hand, its weight was no less than a huge rock. The white yet gentle light felt misplaced in this ominous and twisted nightmare world. Even the twisted and blurry surroundings had started to take real form as the awakening ray was being shone upon them. The power of dispelling nightmare effects or the power to awaken the effects of reality. Grimm said in surprise. While he was opening the dimensional gap last night, Grimm had already noticed the extraordinary effects the awakening ray had on the nightmare world. It was only that he had to hide and protect himself as he had just fallen into the nightmare world. He was still unfamiliar and terrified of this unknown world, in turn having to put his safety as his first priority. Yet now after Grimm had excessively explored the place, he realized that the horrifying creatures of the nightmare world were not as numerous as imagined. The case may be that the sorcerer's world was too big in comparison or, the horrifying creatures were too small in numbers. At least Grimm did not find any signs of the horrifying creatures at the port of the back of the mountain behind the Black Isota Tower. Maybe. This awakening ray can be the perfect disguise for me in this nightmare world. Grimm speculated as he observed the effect the awakening ray had on his surroundings in the nightmare world. This domination energy was obviously not something that could be used by lower level sorcerers like Grimm. Even carrying it along with him would prove to be a huge burden on him. 
Yet even the passive ability possessed by the Awakening Ray had such an incredible ability. After giving it some thought, Grimm took out a delicate crystal cover and put the Awakening Ray within it. Using it as a magical lamp, Grimm awaited the arrival of the night. A blood-red crescent moon replaced the full moon in the sky as if a huge evil smile was taking place. As the blood-red crescent appeared, it was as if the nightmare world had awakened from its slumber. The twisted, elusive and distorted buildings of the town started to solidify as it emitted an ominous nightmare breath. The seemingly normal bluestone streets immediately turned into dirt with disgusting bugs wriggling out of them. The bugs crawled over each other yet no sound could be heard. The backs of the bugs printed with patterns of weeping faces faced Grimm as if they were weeping in front of him. Traces of nightmare mists were released from the ground as they gathered in the air. A couple of moments went by until only a few hundred meters of visibility was left in the nightmare world as it was covered by nightmare mists. And with it came the arrival of Grimm's second night in the nightmare world. What was different this time, was that Grimm had the lamp of awakening in his hands. Under the white and gentle rays of the lamp of awakening, the surrounding corrupted buildings regained some of the normal breath found in the sorcerer's world. Even the dirt beneath his feet turned back into the bluestone street, it was as if the disgusting black bugs were just an illusion. Holding the lamp of awakening, Grimm searched high and low, room after room, searching for existing nightmare phantoms, or in other words, signs of the horrifying creatures. Unfortunately, Grimm found nothing. This town did not seem to have any sign of horrifying creatures. Grimm hid in a small cabin in his misfortune. From the tight world aperture on the wooden bed, he could hear the snoring of a man who was sound asleep. Grimm sat on an oily chair in the cabin as he took out his sorcerer notes and ice marrow crystallization books while falling into deep thought under the awakening ray. As this went on for three days, Grimm had already ventured through three different towns. With this day came the fourth town Grimm had arrived at. This town could barely be called a town. It would make more sense if it were called a village. The entire village only had about 60 to 70 households and only two stone houses in total. One of the stone houses was the mill of the village. The rooftop of the mill had an old windmill that was surrounded by a heavy ominous breath at night in the nightmare world. The other was a miniature castle as if it had been passed down by some ancient noble household forming a distinct visual difference between it and the other wooden houses of the village. Naturally, Grimm headed to the village mill first but he found nothing. As he searched the old houses one after another, Grimm finally arrived at the east side of the village where the three-leveled stone castle was. Sob, sob. A woman's cry came from the second floor, this was something Grimm had never found before in his searches. In his surprise, Grimm initiated his sorcerer's barrier and prepared himself. Creak. Grimm opened the door after taking a deep breath and took big steps into the room of the castle's second floor. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Crunch, crunch. The tick-tocks were from an old wall clock in the room. Wall clocks were made with the basis of gear machinery and the rocker principle. These wall clocks were very common in the sorcerer's world nobility. What was odd was that this clock was not only uncorrupted, it was also very delicate. The only thing out of the ordinary about this clock was that the hands of the clock were upside down. The crunching sound came from a giant wooden bed that was shaking in front of Grimm. The woman's cry also came from that small, tight void aperture from the wooden bed. What on earth? Grimm raised the lamp of awakening in one hand while raising the sabbatic goat staff in another to take a peek at the two distorted feet in the world aperture. It seemed as if they were desperately trying to squeeze into the sorcerer's world. Chapter 505, Nightmare Phantoms Translator, Endless Fantasy Translation Editor, Endless Fantasy Translation Grimm did not attack immediately. The reason being that this pair of feet was snow white, as if the small feet of a human infant of the sorcerer's world. The small feet kept kicking and struggling in the small world aperture. 
Seemingly not hearing Grimm's voice, the woman's weeping behind the world aperture grew more and more sorrowful. After some thought, Grimm realized something. After he had inserted the lamp of awakening into the dimensional gap and hid his own principal will of the sorcerer's world, his body turned back into a twisted, illusionized form and emitted a heavy nightmare breath. Once again, he looked back at the pair of small feet. What feet was there to look at? Just strands of an odd grey mist floating as it attempted to squeeze into the sorcerer's world. The world aperture on the wooden bed was bigger than normal apertures from the common households. It was obvious that in the sorcerer's world, the owner of this stone castle was not just a normal commoner but a sorcerer apprentice. Well, at least, a sorcerer apprentice with some potential. HMPH, well at least I have found a nightmare phantom. In order to distinguish the nightmare creatures of the nightmare world, Grimm had named the nightmare creatures that were said to invade the sorcerer's world as horrifying creatures. While these normal parasitic nightmare creatures were referred to as nightmare phantoms by Grimm. For now, besides the fact that nightmare phantoms could not be killed, Grimm knew nothing about them. If Grimm were to wander around the nightmare world or even find Judgment Staff Stigmata Sorcerer to leave this place, he would have to first understand the dominant group of creatures in this world, the Nightmare Phantoms. Attraction As Grimm's body became more nightmare-like, becoming one of the nightmare creatures, he could land an actual attack on the nightmare creatures, unlike the previous scenario where they passed through each other. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. An ear-screeching scream could be heard. In Grimm's eyes, the grey smoke slowly became a hideous monkey with red fur. The monkey was dragged out of the world aperture by Grimm bit by bit. The abnormal face of the creature was mostly covered up by red fur while its long scarlet tongue had strands of a woman's hair in it. After swallowing the hair greedily, it stared at Grimm in rage. So weak. Based on Grimm's intuition, if the special form of the nightmare phantom were to be removed, it would be merely a knight in the eyes of a sorcerer. A hand quickly grabbed the neck of the nightmare phantom. But just as Grimm was about to try controlling the creature in order to study it, the nightmare phantom turned into black smoke. Hem? Grimm felt that. That the nightmare phantom was trying to squeeze into his body. The nightmare phantom tried to squeeze into Grimm's body from his mouth his nose, his ears, literally any hole it could find yet it was blocked by the twisted sorcerer's barrier. How is that possible? Grimm was shocked at the sight, that such a weak nightmare phantom could cause the sorcerer's barrier to be so twisted. If he were not seeing it with his own eyes, Grimm might not have believed it. If it were to squeeze into his body, Grimm did not know what would happen next. But to come to think of it, it would probably be nothing more than a way to control Grimm. Could it be, that this was the natural ability of nightmare phantoms, and only this ability had been evolved to its peak? Could it be that when the Stigmata Sorcerer of Black Isotter Tower said that the reason Stigmata Sorcerers were invincible in the nightmare world was that besides Stigmata Sorcerers knowing the way to leave the nightmare world, the creatures of the nightmare world were unable to harm the Stigmata Sorcerers in any way as well? Crunch crunch. Repulsion. Grim yelled as the barrier had almost been twisted to its limit. Arg. 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 The hideous monkey was repelled away as it screamed. Fireballs ignited above the sabbatic goat staff as it was shoved toward the nightmare phantom that had failed in parasitizing Grim's body. Boom. Huge flames dispersed as the hideous monkey turned into black smoke once again. But this time, it did not attack Grimm. Instead, it flew toward the ticking wall clock, as if it was not worn out at all. Under the mask of truth, Grimm set his gaze on the ground where his staff had striked. A high-density shockwave ability, on top of flame energy, could not even damage anything in the room. After pondering for moments where he stood, Grimm suddenly tried to smash his sabbatic goat staff into the wall clock. Bang! High-density shockwave ability attacks and flame energy attacks were both used on it, yet the wall clock was not damaged at all. Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. 
The clock's pendulum ticked at the same pace, while the hands of the clock resumed rotating normally unlike how it was upside down previously. After Grimm had observed it for some time, he bent over and picked up the few strands of black hair from the ground. This was indeed the woman's hair from the sorcerer's world. So it would seem that the sorcerer's world isn't completely unaffected by the nightmare world. Grimm muttered to himself as he held onto the woman's black hair. After taking a look at the wall clock that had returned to normal, Grimm continued to stare at it but did not find anything out of the ordinary. Grimm still could not determine the true source of nightmare phantoms. After a few moments, Grimm started to imagine what this corrupted room would have looked like in the sorcerer's world. It should be the room of a woman with a unique nature. Grimm sat on the wooden floor as he took out his notes and his ice marrow crystallization books once again and fell into deep thought. All he could do now was observe what would happen to this room when night fell. The black sun rose once again as a new day in the nightmare world began. The world aperture on the wooden bed in the room started to close up, as if representing the waking of the sorcerer apprentice. Ah, oh, so tired. It's that bad dream again. Ania, was I wrong? The sound of the woman yawning could be heard from the world aperture followed by the voice of a cheerful girl. Come on, what wrong are you talking about, we're sorcerers? He he, having nightmares is the nemesis of our beauty as women though. You should be careful sis, look at your hair that has fallen off. Only in this short period of time, Grimm could hear the wonderful voices from the sorcerer's world as he imagined what had happened in the sorcerer's world. As the world aperture slowly closed and the day of the nightmare world arrived, the world slowly became distorted again. The ominous, corrupted and pressured breath was replaced by distortion. Even the ticking of the wall clock had vanished as silence filled the air. In midst of the silence, Grimm devoted himself to studying his preparations needed to advance to a level 2 sorcerer. Seven hourglasses went by. The night of the nightmare world arrived once again. As the nightmare mists covered the world once more, the world turned from being distorted back into a broken reality. Thick clouds of mist were shrouded throughout the distance. Grimm was still focused on his studies regarding the professional knowledge mentioned in his magical books, deriving knowledge again and again based on his own situation. After another hourglass. The sorcerer's world had already entered midnight. As the world aperture was forming on the wooden bed, the ticking of the clock became clearer and clearer. Grimm slowly closed his experiment notes and his ice marrow crystallization books and stood up. His eyes under the mask of truth were staring at the clock hanging on the wall. Gradually, in Grimm's eyes, that ever-oscillating pendulum seemed to have become heavier and heavier, longer and longer until a noticeable stretch was formed. Black liquid flowed down from the clock. Whilst the hands of the clock had also begun turning upside down. Arg! Puff! The black liquid turned into smoke while swarming toward Grimm. The sorcerer's barrier made a creaking noise of intense friction at the same time. Repulsion Grimm repelled the nightmare phantom once more as it took the form of a hideous monkey with red fur. However, this time, Grimm did not choose to immediately kill this nightmare phantom. Instead, he took out the lamp of awakening and called out to his principal will of the sorcerer's world to solidify his body. At that moment, the hideous nightmare phantom had changed in his eyes. A ferocious infant appeared in Grimm's vision. The infant had black hair. Hair like the one Grimm collected yesterday. Or in other words, the hair of the woman from the sorcerer's world. The hair of the ragdoll rolled toward Grimm, preparing to attack as Grimm waved his magic staff. Puff! The nightmare phantom escaped into the wall clock once again. The doubt in Grimm's heart grew even stronger. Just what on earth were nightmare phantoms? Were they really just lives that appeared randomly in the nightmare world? Chapter 506, You Monster Translator, Endless Fantasy Translation Editor, Endless Fantasy Translation Ten days later Puff 
The nightmare phantom in the captivity seal turned into black smoke as it dissipated. The test subject Grimm had captured for his experiment ended in failure once again. Grimm was feeling slightly disappointed. All the test subjects he had captured for the past few days for his experiment had failed. Grimm did not show the dejection he should have had, instead he maintained his calmness as a sorcerer. After pondering upon the outcome on where he stood for a few moments, Grimm blinked suddenly as he realized something. A layer of fine black powder had appeared by the seal on the ground. There was such a small amount of powder that it was not easily noticeable, it seemed like merely dust on the ground. After dipping at the powder with his hand and wiping it with great force, Grimm could be certain that the dust before him was the black powder which had appeared after a nightmare phantom had dissipated and not just any ordinary dust. Hm? Well it seems like I have finally discovered something. In delight, Grimm squatted down. He tore off a blank piece of paper and started collecting all the black powder which was filled with a corrupted breath. Grimm kept it in a transparent test tube as a specimen as he waited to observe what his next steps were. The test tube only had a thin layer of black ash. It was a very small amount and not much to work with. Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. After a couple of hourglasses, the sound of the wall clock had started to weaken. Once more, a new day in the nightmare world had passed. Grimm let out a sigh. There was still no progress in his study on the black powder in the test tube. The only thing he was certain of was that this was related to some of the horrifying creatures in the nightmare world. In his speculation without evidence, Grimm felt as if the black soot was the metabolic dander of the horrifying creatures. As he collected all the black ashes, Grimm turned to watch the closing world aperture on the wooden bed. Yawn. A yawn escaped from the world aperture, it seemed to have come from one stretching upon waking up. It sounded like the blissful sound of a woman who had slept well for the whole night and was just waking up. Hee hee, you seem to be in good spirits for these past few days, sis. Did you stop having that bad dream? The girl next to her smiled and the sound of two girls laughing could be heard. Hum, maybe it's because I've finally let go. After all, things had already happened. I guess in our sorcerer paths ahead, we don't need to have too many emotions attached. It's enough having loneliness as our company. But I'd advise you to stay away from that guy, all men are up to no good. The voice came to a stop as the world aperture closed. The nightmare world had returned to its silent state once again. The corruption, constraint and ominous state of the night had once again turned into the elusive, twisted daytime of the nightmare world. Hm? Today, it would seem that Grimm had caught something from the conversation of the two girls in the sorcerer's world. It may also be Grimm's brain which had begun to form its own imagination. However, normally when women start talking about heartless men, they would start from talking about the tragedy that took place after the good moments they have had as love turned to hate. As someone who had experienced a genuine relationship, Grimm could understand the genuine love in one's heart. Though he was unfamiliar with the delicate feelings between a man and a woman due to his dull experiences when he was at a young age. Perhaps, the birth of the nightmare phantom in this room was due to the human in the sorcerer's world herself. The hideous monkey with red fur was the actual form it had in the nightmare world, or in other words, the disguise of the black ashes as an infant under the awakening ray was a scene in the nightmare of the sorceress apprentice. Chirp, 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 chirp. As the black sun of the nightmare world rose once again, the black ashes in which Grimm had failed to observe any changes in during the night started to tremble vigorously in the test tube. It seemed as if it was being purified by some mysterious law in the nightmare world as it started to vanish. In the midst of Grimm's shock, he quickly stored the remaining black ashes in the test tube back into the dimensional gap. So this is the reason for the sense of security I feel during the day in the nightmare world. Besides the time when Grimm was targeted once by a horrifying creature when he had just entered the nightmare world, 
Grimm had been studying about nightmare phantoms and ice magic for ten days as he stayed in that small cabin. He now had a preliminary understanding of the nightmare world's structure and was attempting to advance to become a level 2 sorcerer in the nightmare world. However, these past few days had been calm and showed no signs of danger. Well, for now it seems like there's no way to study about nightmare phantoms during the day in the nightmare world. As he took out his ice magic book, something came to Grimm's mind. Could it be that there was some sort of relationship between Solemn's immortal body and the nightmare world? His eyes twinkled as Grimm set his random thoughts aside and started focusing on his ice magic studies. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. After another ten days. After dispersing the nightmare phantom once again, Grimm crouched down to the ground to start collecting the ashes with a piece of paper after glancing toward the wall clock which had returned to normal. The endless world in the eyes of a sorcerer no matter if it were the material world, the illusory world or even the void world, they all shared the one and same fundamental principle, or it could be described as the basic principle of sorcerer knowledge. The principle being that nothing can be created out of nothing. Everything has to follow the conservation principle of energy and mass. The nightmare phantom losing the black ashes must have meant that something was reduced in some aspect of the nightmare phantom. What Grimm wanted to know was, if he were to prevent the day of the nightmare world from purifying the nightmare phantom by killing this nightmare phantom again and again, and keeping the leftover ashes of the transfiguration seal in the dimensional gap, what would happen to the nightmare phantom? Would it die? Holding on to these thoughts, Grimm intended to conduct an experiment to better understand and observe the secret of nightmare phantoms. He remembered how Master Piranos once said that if he were to advance to become a stigmata sorcerer and enter the nightmare world, he should try and stay in this world for some time. Although the nightmare world could not be completely destroyed, as long as the sorcerers continued to weaken from generation to generation, they would be able to infinitely lower the limit of the nightmare creature's parasitic manipulation power, infinitely reaching zero. In other words, after nightmare phantoms were killed, even though they could respawn infinitely, they would indeed be weakened in the process. Even in the past twenty days, Grimm could feel that the nightmare phantom in the wall clock of the room had been weakened drastically. This so-called weakening did not refer to its life but rather the ability of it to forcibly parasitize or control. It would seem that these black ashes represented its parasitizing ability. As such, if the day came when the nightmare phantom could no longer leave black ashes behind after dissipating, it would lose its parasitic manipulation abilities, then what would happen after that? Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Three months later. As night fell, the nightmare world began to turn from being twisted and elusive to being corrupted and realistic. The ticking of the wall clock in the room was becoming clearer and clearer. After an hourglass. Grimm who had begun to get used to the laws of the nightmare world naturally closed his sorcerer book before glancing at the world aperture appearing on the wooden bed. The aperture seemed like a twisted spiral with a diameter of less than half a meter. There might be some results today. Grimm silently waited in the form of a nightmare phantom as he walked toward the wall clock. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. The pendulum was gradually stretched as the ticking sound went on. A black liquid flowed down from the wall clock. This lower level nightmare phantom seemed to be a life which acted completely based on its instincts with no wisdom whatsoever. Or it could be a natural phenomenon in the nightmare world, neither fear of death nor fear toward Grimm was shown. However at this moment, it was obvious that it was weak. When facing Grimm who was still trying to stop it, although the nightmare phantom was still attacking Grimm, it was too weak to bring any harm to the sorcerer's barrier. It was to the point where the body of the hideous monkey had started to emit a white yet gentle light. The light looked like Grimm's lamp of awakening. It would seem that Grimm who kept on collecting the black ashes for the past three months had caused the nightmare phantom's body to lose its ability to block what was within. And this thing within its body was very likely the source of the nightmare phantom. As Grimm's sabbatic goat staff strike the ground, this time, 
the nightmare phantom let out a cry as it left an astonishing amount of black ashes behind. It did not turn into black smoke and fly back into the wall clock like it did in the past, instead it left a small amount of black ashes behind on the ground. Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick. The pendulum of the clock had stopped. This is. In Grimm's eyes, an infant formed by a white and gentle light appeared before him. The true source of this nightmare phantom turned out to be this. In other words, the source of the nightmares of the sorceress apprentice was this infant. Whoa, whoa, whoa. In the midst of Grimm's shock, this white and gentle light of the infant abruptly opened its eyes as it instinctively cried while looking behind Grimm. Child, my child. You monster, leave my child alone. Grimm turned his head to see the sorceress apprentice who had squeezed in through the world aperture as she held her magic staff up in panic and pointed it in his direction. Chapter 507 A Bold Guess Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation His thoughts were evolving swiftly. With some extensive consideration, Grimm immediately took out the lamp of awakening from the dimensional gap while activating the principal will of the sorcerer's world to constrict himself from illusion to return to reality, vanishing from the sorceress's eyes. Grimm's experiences in the dream of this sorceress apprentice were precisely the same as the way he had peeked through the dimensional gap. Everything was slower and bizarre, nothing would surprise him, nor would he really believe what he saw. After all, who would believe a dream? Even if this dream was real, it was just a dream. As for some biographical novels, there would be scenes of oracular guidance in dreams. Every sorcerer believed that the fate of the endless world was unpredictable, hence any prophecy would be rejected with extreme prejudice. Except for the omnipotent God, the other prophecies were considered absurd. Right after Grimm's disappearance, the sorceress then rushed to her baby, holding it in her arms as bitter tears streamed out of her eyes. It's mother's fault, it's all mother's fault, you have every right to hate mother. Mother should not blame you for what that unfaithful man did. It was all mother's fault, woo. The weeping sound was the woman's voice Grim had heard on the first day he arrived at this castle. Like a stealthy hermit, Grim observed everything in the shadows. R -R -E -E -R. The baby laughed cheerfully and seemed to enjoy the warmth in her mother's arms. It opened its big bright eyes as its tender little hands stretched out to the sorceress apprentice's pale face. My baby. The sorceress apprentice held the baby tightly in her arms, kissing it and smiling at it tearfully. Grimm's eyes could not ignore the rundown cabin in the nightmare world that had started to emit golden lights. The whole scene became a beautiful dream and it was no longer a nightmare. Gentle droplets hung in the air. The sorceress apprentice and the baby in her arms turned into golden light fragments, dissipating into the sky and flying into the world aperture. The beautiful scene was short-lived, as the ticking sound began to fill the air once more. At the same time, the world aperture on the wooden bed gradually began to seal up in the middle of the night in the nightmare world. Woo, it's my fault it's my fault. The sorceress apprentice cries came through the closing world aperture. On the other side, her sister seemed to have been awakened. What happened, sister, is it another nightmare? The sorceress apprentice suppressed her mournful voice. Everything has passed, everything in the past is merely our experience. It is the future we should face. It was my fault from the beginning and the child within me should not be punished because of him. The voice stopped with the closure of the world aperture. Grimm strolled to the window and pondered upon the hazy mist in the distance in the nightmare world, as he started sorting through all his findings. The first process was what had happened just now. When the sorceress apprentice entered the nightmare world, her dominant aura had almost crushed Grimm's heart, as he was unable to even lift his head. It was almost like he was facing the sorcerer's world's guardian of autumn. This could not be a normal phenomenon. She came through space and time and caused some unclear distortions in space and time. 
Even the wall clock stopped ticking completely. And she called me a monster? In her eyes, I'm a monster in the nightmare world? Grim dispersed the principal will of the sorcerer's world, and placed the lamp of awakening into the dimensional gap. He looked at his twisted, horrifying palm, and went deep into his thoughts. Based on his observation of the baby nightmare phantom in that room, Grimm concluded that the fundamental essence of the nightmare phantom was the guilt of the sorceress apprentice. In general, psychological trauma would gradually heal through dreams, which was completely normal. The psychological trauma of the sorceress apprentice was because of the child in her belly that she had murdered after a period of emotional entanglement. She had always felt guilty for what had happened, and had hoped to heal this guilt and psychological trauma through dreams. Under normal circumstances, what happened in this room should have started long ago. Before this sorceress apprentice had entered the room in the nightmare world, she represented the law of this world's will because she was the one who created this dream. Nevertheless, Grim lifted some black ashes he had collected in the clear glass bottle. Grim speculated that these black ashes were the metabolic dander of the horrifying creatures from the nightmare world. They surrounded and shielded this baby, thus altering the sorceress apprentice's psychological healing dream in such a way that it became an eternal nightmare, constantly torturing the sorceress apprentice. If it were a weak-willed creature from another world, it would have collapsed under such an influence. Since the sorceress possessed spiritual power and knowledge evolutional capabilities, she could maintain her sorcerer intellect and strengthen her will through incessant meditation. Therefore, nightmare phantoms could only affect her dreams but not her rational judgment. Before the beginning of the ancient sorcerer's world, perhaps this was the method used by horrifying creatures from the nightmare world to control other biological groups. Grimm gathered the clues he had and started to speculate with his sorcerer wisdom. After careful consideration, there were too many missing pieces since he had way too few clues. Without a word, Grimm started to sort out his methods of thinking. The nightmare phantom surrounded and shielded the baby, and the baby itself was the carrier of the sorceress apprentice guilt. It was created by her subconscious mind, in hopes that she would be able to compensate for the trauma through her dreams. But this baby was wrapped by black ashes. It could turn into an ugly red-haired monkey in his eyes, haunting the sorceress apprentice and turning the dream into a nightmare. Her inadvertent behavior broke through the nightmare surface, and replaced the environment with her dream. Does that mean nightmare phantoms are projections of horrifying creatures? Perhaps I should come back tomorrow to check if the wall clock is still there. Wait a minute. I left something out. Suddenly, Grim trembled in fear as he asked himself, Monster. That sorceress apprentice called me a monster and demanded that I leave her baby alone. At that moment, in her eyes, I was a nightmare phantom, an ugly red-haired monkey. At this time, Grim was sure that he had indeed fallen into the nightmare world and had become a member of the nightmare world's creatures. In another context, he was sealed in the nightmare world. To tell the difference, I have to check if I'm covered by dark ashes. Without a word, Grim took out a small elegant knife and cut some of his hair off. His eyes were locked onto his hair as they fell onto the ground. So be it. Grim was relieved by the fact he was not a nightmare phantom. Nevertheless, he was indeed trapped in the nightmare world. He was not the baby, nor an image created by the sorceress apprentice's dream. That's right. I might not be a nightmare phantom, I am still a living creature in the nightmare world. Does that mean that I have become a horrifying creature in this nightmare world? The obvious behavior of a horrifying creature is that it wants to leave the nightmare world. Aren't I the same? If this speculation is correct, the other conclusion is that the horrifying creatures of this nightmare world did not originate from this world, but, like myself, are living beings that have fallen into this spectral world. Other than horrifying creatures, the most powerful beings in the nightmare world described by Master Piranos are called the Dreadlords. Perhaps they are the first few creatures from other worlds trapped in the nightmare world. 
Grimm became much more fascinated by what he had concluded as he continued down his journey of deep thoughts. His breathing hastened gradually. Grimm mumbled to himself, to find out if I'm one of the nightmare world's horrifying creatures, I need to conduct an experiment to create a nightmare phantom just like that baby. As Grimm was caught up in his meditation, the black sun of the nightmare world gradually rose. A new day had begun. The evening was reserved for Grimm's experiments on the nightmare world, and the day was spent on Grimm's studies for his promotion in the path of a sorcerer. Grimm suppressed his curiosity of the nightmare world, as he waited for the next evening in the nightmare world to arrive. Several hourglasses went by as the crimson crescent moon made its way among the stars. It was another night in the nightmare world. Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. The pendulum of the wall clock swayed mechanically within the confined space in its usual manner for the whole night. No nightmare phantom visited the room that night. Chapter 508 Tooth Fairy Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Two years went by. The lamp of awakening and the principal will of the sorcerer's world had been proven to be effective in concealing Grimm at night. With these tools, he had managed to stop a few times along the journey to perform some experiments and make observations on the nightmare phantoms he had encountered. During the day, Grimm strived to search for Judgment Staff Stigmata Sorcerer while keeping his studies on the Ice Elemental Sorcerer knowledge on track. Finally, he led himself to the Holy Tower of Seven Rings Hinterland in the Nightmare World. Based on his fundamental analysis, Grimm was assured that he had become a simple horrifying creature in the nightmare world. Every time Grimm lingered at a spot for too long in the nightmare world, a group of nightmare phantoms would appear in an open area nearby, thus turning his dream into a nightmare. Perhaps it was caused by Grimm's desperation to leave this world. The nightmare law in the dream world would cause such events to occur each time the nightmare breath absorbed desperation. This was the same technique adopted by other horrifying creatures of the nightmare world to alter environments, influencing the dream of humans in the sorcerer's world. There were thousands of entrances into the nightmare world, yet none of them was accessible from this side of the world. It made it impossible to influence a dream of a mere sorceress apprentice, even for Grimm who had turned into a horrifying creature. Grimm took his sweet time on his journey between walking and stopping for observations. He was not in a rush to find traces of Judgment Staff Stigmata Sorcerer. Two years of studies had strengthened Grimm's confidence in his fundamental understanding of the nightmare world's fundamental world law. In his journey, he had managed to dodge two giant red-haired monkeys who were flying by in the sky. All thanks to the Lamp of Awakening and the principal will of the sorcerer's world, he managed to metamorphose and dodge the careless horrifying creatures, thus avoiding possible danger. In his observations, these horrifying creatures possessed the intelligence to think and reason. However, Grimm noticed some unusual phenomena when he arrived at the prosperous area of the hinterland in the Holy Tower of Seven Rings. It enhanced Grimm's comprehension of the nightmare world and also the sorcerer's world. The black sun took its leave as the crimson crescent moon ascended upon the dark sky. Nightmare mist emergence signified the arrival of a new night in the nightmare world. Swoosh. The nightmare mist expanded itself like a blanket, widely covering buildings, plants, and the ground. The dream world's atmosphere withered into a rundown, oppressive, and depressing ambience. Moments later, Swarms of tricolor fairies ascended in the middle of the Holy Tower of Seven Rings. Each of them was colored with red, yellow, and green, as they duff from the high altitudes of the nightmare world, and headed toward different human markets. Grimm felt a distinct fear of these fairies from the nightmare phantoms. As a horrifying creature of the nightmare world, Grimm felt the presence of congenital enemies as well. Instincts told him not to get too close with these tricolor fairies. What is this? A new law in the nightmare world. Grimm could not fully understand what was happening at the moment. 
Grimm was expecting to witness some suppression methods used in the sorcerer's world to control the nightmare world, yet these tricolor fairies did not have any connection with the sorcerer. They did not originate from the nightmare world either. What Grimm sensed from them was a kind of law. The nightmare world had almost no resources for the sorcerer's world. Therefore, it was entirely ignored by sorcerers, despite the fact that the spectral world was a part of the sorcerer's world. Common sorcerers could not enter this world, and those very few who were powerful enough did not want to enter this world without firm reasons. Those powerful stigmata sorcerers and celestial sorcerers still had to pay a high price to enter or leave this world. This spectral world was closely connected with the sorcerer's world, hence the rules of the sorcerer's world's holy tower law applied in this world. The nightmare world existed only because of the appearance of horrifying creatures. In fact, it was merely a fraction of the dream world. Any dream world's living beings could easily connect to the spectral world, yet they still needed great effort to be present physically in it. It was similar to traveling between high-level spectral worlds. With one hand holding the sabbatic goat staff, and the other hand holding the lamp of awakening, Grimm wandered around, covered by the oppressive nightmare mist. He kept a safe 100-meter distance away from the tricolor fairies, like a lone nightwalker in the dark. Under his mask of truth, his eyes watched the swarms of tricolor fairies as they passed by him in the sky above. He wondered to himself. Maybe these fairies are the clues I have been looking for to find Judgment Staff Stigmata Sorcerer. Black Isota Stigmata Sorcerer mentioned that Judgment Staff Stigmata Sorcerer was Grimm's only hope to leave the nightmare world. The first thought that came into Grimm's mind was celestial sacrifice. High chances were that Judgment Staff Stigmata Sorcerer of the Nightmare World was the most potent Stigmata Sorcerer who had performed celestial sacrifice for the humans in the Sorcerer's World. Although the Nightmare World, as an evil parasitic world of the Sorcerer's World, could not substantially affect the Sorcerer's World, it could still indirectly cause some adverse effects. No one from the Sorcerer's World would expect a horrible nightmare before they sleep, would they? If there were a potent stigmata sorcerer that could gradually weaken or even remove the effect of the nightmare world on humans, then in the context of the sorcerer's world's humans, it had fulfilled the law of celestial sacrifice. These tricolor fairies only appear in the central area of the holy tower. There were no fairies sighted in the sorcery academy, which is located on the outskirts of the holy tower. Why? I have to try to understand the nature of the tricolor fairy's mysterious law. As Grimm was exposed to the deeper knowledge level of the sorcerer's world, he vaguely understood the fundamentals of the world laws. The first time a sorcerer could be directly exposed to the world law was the moment when a stigmata sorcerer performed a celestial sacrifice. To a low-level sorcerer, the world law was an inexorable and unreachable supreme power but stigmata sorcerers could create a world law through celestial sacrifice, a technique mastered by celestial sorcerers to control world laws. Grimm speculated that the beautiful tricolor fairies were not a natural breed among the sorcerer's world and the nightmare world. The only possible explanation for their existence could only be a law created by a stigmata sorcerer during a celestial sacrifice ritual. As for the identity of this particular stigmata sorcerer, High chances were that it was Judgment Staff Stigmata Sorcerer mentioned by Black Isota Stigmata Sorcerer. Like a lone nightwalker in the dark carrying a lantern to light his path, Grimm followed the trail left by the tricolor fairies in an unknown city carefully. The lamp of awakening restored the appearance of moist mud and black worms with howling faces all over the ground back into a green stone street. During the dark night, if Grimm did not invoke the principal will of the sorcerer's world and light up the lamp of awakening, he would appear as a horrifying creature of the nightmare world. All of the disgusting worms would face Grimm with their filthy howling faces. Grimm suspected that this was the world law created by the dreadlords of the nightmare world. Dreadlords in the nightmare world were equivalent to the god of the gods in the endless world, at the level of eternal dominators. Unfortunately, Dreadlords only dominated the nightmare world. 
Compared to the endless world, the spectral world was merely a tiny grain. The Dreadlord's abilities might be beyond imagination, yet they were limited within the nightmare world. Any stigmata sorcerer from the sorcerer's world could quickly nullify them. Black Isotter Stigmata Sorcerer mentioned that people who did not understand the nightmare world would think that it was an undisputedly indestructible world, yet to Stigmata Sorcerers from the Sorcerer's world, it contained merely bugs that could only dim a person's spirit power. Maybe. As Grimm gradually mastered his understanding of the nightmare world's law, he began to suspect that those nightmare creatures that had been tracking him were not horrifying creatures but one of the dreadlords. At this moment, Grimm's observation in the past two years had revealed four of the nightmare world's laws. The law of filthy mud, the law of black worms, the law of matter decay, and the law of nightmare mist. On the first day when Grimm fell into the nightmare world, two nightmare creatures attacked him when he flew during the night. Based on Grimm's current findings, if those creatures were part of a dreadlord, it might have been the creator of the nightmare mist law in the spectral world. All of a sudden, Grimm stood perfectly still. In the distance, a tricolor fairy flew out of a house. Since Grimm was a nightmare creature, he had to maintain his stealth in the presence of such a powerful congenital enemy. After all, it was a world law created by Judgment Staff Stigmata Sorcerer. They were still laws. Huh? A tooth. Under the mask of truth, Grimms possessed the eagle eye. He saw the tricolor fairies taking out a human tooth from the room before flying to the sky. In doubt, Grimm pushed open the door to the room. Judging by the furnishings in the room, it appeared to be an ordinary human boy's room, aged around six to nine years old. The sound of his peaceful breathing could be heard through the tricolor world aperture. It really is a kind of law that protects human dreams. Grimm stared at the tricolor world aperture while muttering to himself. Grimm lived in the bustling area of the Holy Tower in the Sorcerer's World, which was the focus area of the Sorcerer's World's law. He had never known of any world law that took care of comparatively pauperized areas such as the Academy area. A few hourglasses went by. The crimson crescent moon of the nightmare world was no longer seen on the horizon, as the black round sun rose from the other end. A new day had begun. A little boy's excited voice came through the closing world aperture. Dad, Mom, look. The tooth under my pillow is gone, it was the tooth fairy who took my teeth and gave me my blessing. Grimm was stunned in the nightmare world, as he was lost in his thoughts. The Tooth Fairy? There seems to be a beautiful creature created in a book by the sorcerer's world called the Tooth Fairy. Could this fairy tale be the celestial sacrifice of Judgment Staff Stigmata Sorcerer, an effort to preserve beautiful dreams and expel nightmares from the people of the sorcerer's world? 1. The mystery had begun to reveal itself. The Nightmare World's Academy area could not possibly be the birthplace of Tricolor Fairy's law because the children were too poor to read about the Tooth Fairy, thus, such a protection law could not possibly be created in the Nightmare World, could it? Translation Note 1. Tooth Fairy, a fairy tale written by Audrey Wood. Can you fool the Tooth Fairy? Its protagonist, Jessica was jealous when her brother lost a tooth and she tried a con job with a piece of corn. Her trick was uncovered at the Tooth Fairy's palace, and she suffered the wrath of the robot tooth cleaners, who wanted to put her in jail. Jessica's dream turned into a nightmare, but like all fairy tale stories, it had a happy ending. This has its scary moments, although it is at least comforting to know in this world of uncertainty that the Tooth Fairy really does exist, and furthermore, she was not to be fooled. Chapter 509, Waking by Daybreak Translator, Endless Fantasy Translation Editor, Endless Fantasy Translation Another two years had passed. Tricolor fairies appeared only for a brief period of time every night. Grimm utilized the narrow window of time to observe, analyze, and summarize his findings. Every day, he moved further toward the direction of where tricolor fairies came from 
hoping he could one day trace the source of the tricolor fairy's law. That location could be the home of Judgment Staff Stigmata Sorcerer. That would be the only method for Grimm to leave the nightmare world. Hem. What an amazing ability, your nightmare power is stealth. Engrossed in his tricolor fairy's tracking using the lamp of awakening in the dark night, Grimm was startled by the sudden voice, as he jumped more than ten meters away. His sabbatic goat staff moved toward the source of sound simultaneously with the cold double-colored eyes under the mask of truth. Surprisingly, the voice appeared to be in the sorcerer language. Within Grimm's sight, an ugly red-haired monkey was gradually crawling out from under the mud. It was about three meters tall, way shorter than the giant hairy monkeys of seven to ten meters that Grimm had seen before, yet it was taller than a standard nightmare phantom, which was usually less than one meter tall. The nightmare world's horrifying creature wiped off the mud on his face leisurely, caught a few disgusting black worms, and tossed them into his mouth. Such an ability is new in this area, are you from another area of the nightmare world? The nightmare world's horrifying creature ignored Grimm's defensive stance. Anyone whose stealth was broken by others would react in the same way as Grimm. Perhaps in its eyes, Grimm appeared as the same figure in the eyes of the sorceress apprentice during their first encounter an ugly red-haired monkey. Although it had just happened, as a dark demon hunter, Grimm had already thought of thousands of methods to handle the situation. Survival instincts were the fundamental skill every dark demon hunter had to master. After all his practice of deception skills in various demon hunting expeditions, Grimm's pretense was now flawless. Who are you? Grimm's discourse was simple. The simpler the dialogue, the less likely it was to be exposed. This horrifying creature shook its body like a wet puppy, cleaning itself of the mud, as it mumbled, My name is Dremo and my nightmare power is ground sensing. I can not see you, but I can hear you in the nightmare mire. Grimm went through his thoughts for a moment, trying to extract any information regarding the horrifying creature's communication methods from the conversation. I dislike the idea of talking to strangers. Now that you know stealth is my nightmare power, I think I should leave. Wait a minute. Dreamo suddenly stopped Grimm, and Grimm glared at him with a killing intent. Don't misunderstand me, I want to ask. Eh, uh, do you want to be reborn? Grimm locked eyes with Dreamo. He was fully aware of how much being reborn meant to the nightmare world's horrifying creatures. After a quick breath, Grimm asked, What do you mean? The ugly red-haired monkey grinned, exposing the straight and white teeth in his mouth. It licked its lips with a scarlet tongue, and pointed toward the direction behind him. Over there lies Sorrow Mountain, where the strongest fallen in this area, the Dream Watcher King, lives. It has the power to see through the desire of every dream, he is the third servant of the Great Dreadlord in the Nightmare Mire. And now, it is calling for all the Fallens to Sorrow Mountain. There is a sorceress who has begun to wither into a Fallen. Withered? Activation of Nightmare Phantom's Curse. Humph! The only chance of rebirth would be given to the Dream Watcher King, what does it have to do with me? After that, Grimm was about to leave. These nightmare creatures achieved the ability to be reborn by utilizing nightmares to influence a human's will in the sorcerer's world. Theoretically, Grimm could use this method since he was a horrifying creature in the nightmare world but this was not what Grimm wanted. Grimm's only desire was to leave this world. Plus, how could it be so easy to leech a sorcerer's will? HMPH. This world has become weaker, those idiotic sorcerers from the sorcerer's world have dragged us into extinction. If we do not act now, we will never have the chance again. For eras later, this world would be destroyed by the destruction of the sorcerer's world. For eras. Grimm knew the world core of the sorcerer's world was on the brink of collapsing. When the sorcerer's world left its original coordinate in the endless world, it destroyed the balanced law in the endless world. Without the balanced law's support, 
the small friction in the world core would expand as time passed, until the world core would ultimately collapse. However, this was the first time Grimm had heard of an exact period left for the sorcerer's world before destruction, and he was informed by a horrifying creature from the nightmare world. For eras. That was another 40,000 years. Even for an official sorcerer, 40,000 years was a very long period. In the common law, it was stated that the soul of any official sorcerer could not withstand 10,000 years without decaying, thus standardizing 10,000 years as an era. In fact, most of the official sorcerers began to deteriorate after 6 or 7,000 years, and few sorcerers could survive until the limit of 10,000 years. 40,000 years? This was a shocking secret. Such news did not spread in the sorcerer's world. Celestial sorcerers did not want to lose the confidence within the sorcerer's world or risk it being overrun by panic, yet the nightmare world had no such concerns. The dreadlords that dominated the nightmare world needed every nightmare creature to struggle and berserk as one. Since Grimm's mind was still one of a sorcerer's, he had yet fully transformed into a nightmare creature. It would be impossible for him to understand the meaning of four eras to nightmare creatures. HMPH, even if there were only four days before the nightmare world's annihilation, the chance of rebirth will not be given to you or me, what does it have to do with me? Of course, it does. Dreamo smiled mysteriously, as he gloomily uttered his words, he he, this black sorceress commands a tremendous number of human slaves. Once the Dream Watcher King completes his rebirth, he will enhance these human slaves with the sorceress hematologic sorcery and stretch the world aperture. With his dream watching ability, he will guide us to find the human slaves' desires in their dreams, triggering their mark of perdition, and trapping them within the nightmare world. We will all get the chance of rebirth. Black Sorceress Human Slaves with their activated mark of perdition, they would be nightmare phantoms. That was a piece of shocking information. Despite the risks, perhaps this was an opportunity to further understand the laws of the nightmare world, a stepping stone to a better way of leaving this world. Only one sorceress is showing signs of withering into this world. Why did the Dream Watcher King summon all the Fallens instead of completing the rebirth by himself? Grim questioned with doubts. Because the Dream Watcher King cannot fulfill the desire of this sorceress, thus he could not break the sorcerer's world's daybreak waking law. He needs her to stay in this world forever, so he could take her place to wake up as her in the sorcerer's world. Grim's eyes flickered. Other than mental strength and will protection, sorcerers were protected by the sorcerer's world's daybreak waking law. Chapter 510 Fright Energy. Translator, Endless Fantasy Translation Editor, Endless Fantasy Translation. Deep in the mountains, inside a huge castle. The bloody crescent in the nightmare world formed an odd arc. An ominous light shone upon the inner parts of the castle through the windows, reflecting the hideous and elusive form of the red-haired monkeys. The monkeys all held various shapes and forms. During the day, any horrifying creature in the nightmare world was unable to sense each other as they seemed to be illuminated by the awakening ray. The whole nightmare world was like a lonely world with only a single person during the day. Yet when night arrived, it brought the start of a nightmare. Thousands of horrifying creatures, big and small all sat crowded together. Inside the castle, there were five tables with the length of a hundred meters. The tall red-haired monkeys were normally above 10 meters tall while the smaller ones were only more than a meter. All five tables in the castle were filled by the monkeys. On the highest seat of the hall sat a huge red-haired monkey about 30 meters tall. The blood-red third eye at the center of the monkey's forehead was blinking rapidly. This monkey was the Dream Watcher King. The king was taller and bigger than any other red-haired monkey Grimm had seen ever since he had arrived in the nightmare world. He 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 he, welcome, to the Dream Watcher Castle. Nightmare phantoms, one after another, flew into the castle from the hall as the Dream Watcher King spoke. 
These nightmare phantoms brought various plates of different sizes by either holding them up high or lifting them all together at once. Placed on the plates were neat and carefully selected women's hair, each strand filling each plate. This reminded Grimm of the time when he had a nightmare phantom outbreak, which was that time when he was forcibly dragged into the nightmare world by the strong horrifying creature or the possible dreadlord. He was reminded of the continuous hair vomit projected at that time. These were the hair that had naturally fallen off due to nightmare phantoms interrupting the sleep of humans in the sorcerer's world. Kkkkkkkkk. A hoarse yet excited laugh could be heard from the hideous two-meter-tall monkey sitting in front of Grimm. The monkey pushed the long hair on its face away as it started making a pouting gesture with its lips. To Grimm's surprise, the monkey sucked in the hair like it was a delicious meal of noodles as it munched on it, leaving a delighted expression on its face. What's wrong? Is it not to your liking? Do you want to try mine? At that moment, Grimm had already put away the lamp of awakening and dispelled his principal will of the sorcerer's world, returning to his state of being a horrifying creature in the nightmare world. Dreamo who was next to Grimm saw how Grimm was not enjoying the hair on the plate like the other horrifying creatures. Thinking that the black hair on Grimm's plate was not up to his taste buds, Dreamo pushed his own plate toward Grimm. The hair on Dreamo's plate was a plate of curly red hair with beach waves. After nodding at Dreamo, Grimm lowered his head and started feasting on the hair. Gobbling down every bite just like the other horrifying creatures. Although his heart was filled with disdain, this was what he had to endure as a dark sorcerer in disguise. Yet. Hem. This feeling. The moment Grimm started feasting on the hair, an amazing wave of heat spread throughout Grimm's body, giving him an indescribable pleasure. It was as if some of the potential in an aspect of his life had been increased. In other words, Grimm's sensory ability of dimensional gaps received some kind of stimulus. This. This was something Grimm had never imagined. Being a horrifying creature in the nightmare world could help him gain this kind of ability. After Dreamo who was next to Grimm had finished slurping on the black hair, it happily leaned back on its wooden chair. Staring at the ceiling of the hall, Dreamo murmured, Limo, when do you think we'll be able to have powers like the Dream Watcher King? He changed this castle in the nightmare world and became the third servant of the great nightmare Maya Dreadlord. Limo was the name Grimm had told Dreamo to disguise his own. There was no meaning to it. This Dream Watcher King could change this castle within the nightmare world to form a different building structure from the original location in the sorcerer's world. This itself was a sign of surpassing beyond the normal levels of the horrifying creatures in the nightmare world. If the horrifying creatures in the nightmare world were equivalent to the official sorcerers in the sorcerer's world, then the dreadlord would be like the celestial sorcerer while these dreadlord servants would be like the stigmata sorcerers. Servants of the Dreadlord each held a strong ability to change a part of the environment in the nightmare world. No clue, probably never. Grimm answered, yet his heart was filled with a lingering question. How did the horrifying creatures in the nightmare world grow stronger and stronger? Obviously, according to the special traits of the horrifying creatures, it was definitely not through physical evolution, mental evolution, nor energy evolution. Also the signs that they had shown after going through evolution was an evolution that created a much stronger impact on nightmares. HMPH. I'd believe that if you were one of the others who had fallen, saying that reaching the Dream Watcher King's level is impossible. However, with your stealth nightmare power, you can nearly be hidden from all the sorcerer's protection laws. This would mean that you'd be able to spread the fallen ashes however you please and you'd have numerous nightmare phantoms at your beck and call to collect fright energy. Even if you were to become a new dreadlord one day, I wouldn't be surprised. Fright energy. Emotion collection. The way these nightmare creatures evolved was the same as how black sorcerers did, the difference was that despair energy was replaced with fright energy. To come to think of it, Collecting fright energy must be the same as collecting despair energy. 
it could probably only amplify the effects of an attack from the inner part of a species. Not only that, when the collection of fright energy had reached a certain point, the horrifying creatures of the nightmare world would create a stronger image on the nightmares of the species from which the fright energy was collected. It might even affect the whole environment of the nightmare world like the dreadlords. This type of emotion collecting was indeed worth studying. Many of the hideous red-haired monkeys in the hall started to laugh amongst themselves after feasting on the hair meal offered by the Dream Watcher King. All of them were laughing as they waited upon the Dream Watcher King's orders. He 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 he, later, after that fallen sorcerer has entered this world, I want you guys to try and kill him. The Dream Watcher King said in a low voice. What? How is that possible? If this were the case, if we kill him, wouldn't that make our infiltration a failure? He would be jolted awake by the fear. One after another, the horrifying creatures were confused by the Dream Watcher King's request. Killing a human in his nightmares was not an impossible task, but the only effect it would have to the human in real life was that the human would only be jolted awake by the nightmare. In addition to that, it was too difficult to kill someone who was dreaming while being protected by the principal laws of the world that was equivalent to the distortion of space and time. The Dream Watcher King gripped his hands that were filled with red hair while the bloody eyeball of the third eye on its head continued to dart around. As for me, I will act as his slave and crush all of you one by one to release his desire for violence from the deepest part of his heart. Then, I'll drag him through the laws of natural awakening during daybreak so that he will still be venting his desire in the nightmare world, in turn accomplishing my rebirth. Crushing The horrifying creatures of the nightmare world were unable to be killed, just like the immortal body of Solemn. Hem. Such a heavy sorcerer scent. Creak. Right at that moment, the huge doors of the castle hall were opened. An enormous red-haired monkey about the size of the Dream Watcher King walked into the hall as it looked around.